Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to this session. I'm pretty surprised to see that many attendees in a session which starts with Microsoft. So uh, just a quick tour around the room. Uh, who is using Windows? Ah, quite a lot of, quite many people. So um, I will be talking about Microsoft Azure today. Uh, we'll be talking about mainly open source and non-Microsoft technology. Um, you will be seeing quite a lot of stuff around Java, open source, and many tools we are uh, supporting on the platform. Uh, I will uh, start by introducing myself a little bit. I'm Christoph. I'm uh, working in Microsoft Belgium as a cloud solution architect. Um, I'm a big Azure fan. Um, I've been working with it full time for the past four years. I'm proud father of Lucas. Uh, today he became one month old, so uh, it's pretty new. And you might be surprised, even though I work for Microsoft today, that when I was preparing this talk, and I took a booze, a uh, small tea uh, in the evening when I was preparing my slides, that I even was drinking from a Java Polis cup. So I'm a former uh, Java Polis attendee. I uh, was a Java developer for seven, six to seven years, uh, combining both .NET and Java development. So uh, it was a little bit rusty when I was preparing my demos. Um, so bear with me when I do some demos. Let's pray to the demo gods if everything goes well. Uh, just a small question. Uh, I will be using Eclipse. Is that still a good IDE today to be using? Who is using Eclipse? All right, that's great. Uh, who is using IntelliJ? Okay, I see people using both. Okay, great. Uh, are there people using Visual Studio? Okay, because I, at the end of the talk, I have some announcements which we made yesterday evening, uh, which might be interesting for you around .NET and open source, and you'll see about it. So, um, first of all, who has been working or using Azure already? I see one, two, all right, great. Um, are there people who are playing games in the room? like Titanfall. Anyone? Did you know that Titanfall is running on Azure? Right, I will be exp briefly explaining. Did anybody watch the Olympics? The NBC Sports live streaming? Did you know that it was running on Azure? So in the end, you might have already experienced the power of the cloud and Azure uh, before. So the Olympics, streaming to web and mobile, so um, around 100 million viewers who are looking at it at the same time, running on top of Azure Media Services. And during the US and Canada hockey match, 2.1 million concurrent HD viewers were streamed by Azure Media Services. So it's a great sample of, of something out in the public that you might have already used before. Second thing is Titanfall. I think it's probably one of the first games in the world who is doing a full server-side AI and who is using the full power of cloud to be able to host all those user sessions. So you remember when I was playing multiplayer games in the past, it was always the fact who is going to host the server and who is going to, do, to be our host. And then the, the guy with the most lag was complaining that the others were cheating. So that's the idea behind Titanfall, that they're hosting over 100,000 servers in the cloud. And basically they have a pool of around 300,000 servers able to host user sessions so that any cheating, any benefit of lack is basically out of the question in that, in that sense. It might be the future for next games coming that the cloud might be there in a cost-efficient way to serve these types of scenarios. Now, uh, before I forget, uh, I have some nice gadgets to hand out. We have Azure Passes and 10 of these guys. This is basically a battery to charge your phone or your tablet. And it can be used as an external speaker as well, through USB. And we're uh, giving them away at our Microsoft boot, 10 of them, to the 10 people who tweet using DevOx and Azure. And the 10 best tweets can come at around 4.30 at our boot during the break and uh, pick up these, uh, these nice things. So to show you how, first of all, start a little bit with what Azure is, because uh, there were only two people in the room who already has, you have used it or have experienced it, to show you a little bit the statistics about, uh, about our cloud. Basically, currently, we have around 300 services running, both compute, networking, and infrastructure. And if you see on the left the map, that's the Azure footprint today. We're currently available in 19 regions around the globe. So we have data centers in Europe, in the US, in China, in Asia, we have uh, 
recently announced two new ones in Australia even. So uh, we have 19. Now, if you look, we are currently having around 1.2 million databases in, the, in, uh, in Azure. And what I find most cool is that we have over 30 trillion objects stored in our storage system. Uh, I heard this morning that it, in the meanwhile it became 35. So it changes basically every day. So um, to give you an idea, 19 data centers, 19 regions around the world, that's pretty big. And you have all that power avail available at your fingertips. And I will be showing today how you can leverage for open source and Java development the power of our platform. So of course, knowing that everybody is looking at cloud these days, there are a few of key characteristics where every cloud needs to be, be different. And basically, that's to be always up and always on. So that's where customers today are demanding applications which are always available. We're used to uh, using Facebook and Twitter, which are basically never down. So in terms of application development and server hosting, we need to make sure that we can deliver high service level agreements to our customers. And basically, whenever you deploy cloud, whether, whatever cloud it is, it's those four scenarios on the right that you will be uh, encountering, that you need to solve. Uh, the on and off scenario where people have sometimes need of capacity, but most of the time they're not. Growing fast, certainly for startups. I heard that the uh, edition of DevOps this year is about startups. So for them, it's important to start with a platform, to host software as a service, and to be able to scale on demand, and to be able to cope with many customers. So that's growing fast. And of course, the unpredictable and predictable bursting are the two scenarios which, are, which we are seeing every day. I remember when uh, Michael Jackson died, um, every newspaper around the globe was having some performance issues because everybody wanted to read that article. That that's unpredictable bursting. Now, of course, with all this cloud today, what is important is that we can focus on scalability and that we can optimize our resources for when they are needed. And that's where we see that if we are buying hardware capacity today, we might have too many tomorrow, but we might have too few in a, f in a couple of weeks. And that's where we can leverage the cloud to try to follow that elasticity and that curve of usage as much as possible. Now, when we look at Azure internally into the data center, we have buildings on each side in each of those 19 regions. And you have to imagine that as being one football field in size. So it's pretty big. Uh, it's one building in a data center. Now, just to give an idea how big it is, it can fit two jumbo jets inside. So uh, that's pretty big. Now. We have on each side 16 of those buildings hosting around 600,000 servers per region. So if you have 19 regions, 600,000 servers, you know that the capacity is there if you need it to scale and to be high available. Now, looking at the last 12 months, cloud and certainly Azure has been evolving at an inc uh, in insane pace. So it's almost impossible to keep up with all the new additions uh, coming every week. And if you look at what has been added in the past 12 months, it's basically everything you see on the slide, ranging from server backup to a deal we made with Docker, IBM support, Oracle support, full Java support on Azure. So we have been working quite a lot in extending our platform, not only for Microsoft technology, but also to others. To give you an idea that currently in Azure, around one-fifth of the servers running are non-Microsoft based, so they're Linux machines. So we n that's why Microsoft is investing heavily in open source and all these other technologies, because we also believe that it's very important for our customers and also for the, the community able to use this cloud as their solution, as their platform. Now, how do we differentiate? We're, according to Gardner, a uh, leader in the four um, for things, so uh, cloud infrastructure as a service, uh, public cloud storage, and uh, server virtualization. And of course, where we differentiate is our hyperscale, which we saw with 600,000 servers per building uh, on our sites. Uh, enterprise great, but we try to differentiate as much as possible on the hybrid approach. So for enterprise customers today, 
not a lot of them are ready to go full public. So they are asking, okay, what should we do? We have some service in our own data center or we, we have invested quite a lot in hardware which we don't want to throw away. How can we link it to the cloud and how can we take benefit of something like the public cloud? And then a hybrid approach where you have a hybrid network between on-premise and the cloud is what you are looking for. And that can be both application-based or it can be infrastructure-based. It basically doesn't matter, but the hybrid approach is where Microsoft has already experienced for the past 30 years, and that's where we try to differentiate compared to the uh, competitors. Now, what I wanted to talk about today is not about Azure and Microsoft and, and how we can run .NET and, and Microsoft-based applications into the cloud, but I wanted to talk, talk about the investments Microsoft is currently making to be an uh, open platform for other technologies. And I've listed here quite some logos of, uh, of things we are currently supporting in Azure. And you will probably notice that we have support for Eclipse, we're running Drupal, we have WordPress in our gallery. A lot of the services uh, running in Azure can be directly linked to Git, GitHub, Bitbucket, or a local Git repository to publish your applications directly from your machine into the cloud. Uh, we have support for many Linux distributions from CentOS, SUSE. Uh, we have support for Oracle, SAP, Citrix. We have quite a lot of support for, for many, many uh, other things than just Microsoft technology. And I will be picking out quite a lot of those today and we'll sh try to show you as much as possible in a demo instead of just going through some slides. Now, before we go into the details per component, I wanted to talk a little bit about the building blocks. So underneath we have the cloud platform, our cloud infrastructure, and then of course we have the two flavors, infrastructure as a service and platform as a service, where we say, okay, we are going to host virtual machines, virtual networks, the hybrid uh, connections, that's infrastructure as a service, both on Windows, Windows virtual machines and Linux virtual machines. And then, of course, we have the platform as a service, which I will also show you today, which is around web development, which is about data, which is about uh, mobile services you can use to, to build uh, mobile applications, uh, which we will go into more detail later. And then on top of that, we have, of course, our programming languages and our tools, which are, of course, the full Microsoft stack using Visual Studio uh, with Team Foundation Server, but, of course, also full support for Git, Java, Node.js, uh, PHP, and Python. Now, you would be surprised, but the Microsoft development teams for Azure are almost fully working with GitHub today uh, for their source code development, so they're not even using TFS. Um, and with the announcement that I will make in the end around .NET becoming open source, uh, you will see that also that code is, going, is being available in GitHub instead of our own Team Foundation server. Now, looking at Azure and developers, First of all, we, we need to, to see, okay, what's the benefit of you as a developer? Uh, who is a developer, by the way? Okay, most of you. Uh, so what is the benefit? You can, of course, keep using Visual Studio if you're a Windows user, but we have full support for, for Eclipse as well. Uh, now, uh, we also have a plugin for IntelliJ, um, which is still in development, but it offers already some features. And then from operating system, you have the choice in Windows or Linux. Uh, basically, anything that runs on a hypervisor can run in Azure. Uh, it mm, depends, basically, should you run it in terms of supportability. But if it runs on-prem, it, it probably also runs in the cloud. And then looking at data, we, uh, we offer SQL Server, of course, as a service and on infrastructure. And we offer Oracle, uh, Oracle DB, Oracle WebLogic. And one logo which I uh, still missed, uh, which I ha have to add, is IBM support. So we're supporting WebSphere, DB2, and MQ on, uh, on Azure as well. So um, you have plenty of choice in, uh, in that. And then, of course, looking at languages, we most of said uh, most of that already. It's basically .NET. PHP, Java, Node.js, uh, running into our platform as a service. And then for websites, we have uh, a gallery, which I will show you, where you can easily deploy Drupal, uh, WordPress, Joomla-based uh, content management systems. And then for mobile, you might have heard uh, recently that with Office 365, Microsoft has released also uh, clients 
for the full office suite on uh, Android and iOS. And if we look at mobile development, uh, which I will be talking more in depth later, uh, we'll see that everything from notifications to backend systems can be deployed in Azure, but are fully compatible. All the libraries for Java, Node.js, Android, iOS are fully compatible and fully available for you to start developing applications on top of uh, the Azure platform. Now, that was the developer side. Are there also uh, more uh, infrastructure guys in the, in the room? Of only a few, right? So if we look at what they uh, have in, in Azure, it's basically uh, a full support of Chef and Puppet. So if you would like to do uh, the full configuration of your server uh, infrastructure uh, in an automated way, you can use Puppet or Chef. Uh, the middle is PowerShell, so it's basically the PowerShell desired state configuration that you can apply. Uh, we have our identity solution which uh, basically offers you single sign-on on top of your corporate uh, identity store, Active Directory, which might be uh, a Windows-based Active Directory, but also others. Uh, and then we have uh, Azure Active Directory offering you a federated identity based on claims, claims-based identity towards Facebook and, uh, and other uh, providers. Now, uh, for operations, it's also important to look at monitoring and auto-scaling. So I will be showing that today as well. So it's important to always keep an eye on what is my service doing? Uh, what is the status? Uh, how, how is it performing? So that's monitoring. And of course, since we try to achieve that ultimate uh, goal of reaching the optimal capacity in our servers, auto-scaling is, of course, uh, what we need so that the platform itself is going to react on peaks and is going to make sure that the platform scales when it needs to. Now, the first thing which I would like to show you today is a little bit infrastructure as a service, uh, how you can start building virtual machines, because for developers even, it's, it's handy to have your development environment set up in a few clicks and to be able to start deploying your websites on Apache or MySQL. So I will be showing that with Linux on Azure. Um, and then I will show you how easy it is to start deploying Oracle on Azure. So uh, an important note here is that um, Oracle on Azure comes in two flavors. You have license portability, where you bring your own license. You have already a contract with Oracle and you have a license, so you are able to deploy that same license into an Azure virtual machine. Or you can pay it per hour. So it's uh, basically Oracle as a service, and if you shut down the machine, you start paying for it. So it's uh, both for WebLogic and uh, Oracle DB and full Java support. And then I will be showing a small demo of the VM Depot, which is uh, owned by the Microsoft Open Tech guys. They are all the guys behind the open source and the libraries and, and, and such. So they have a VM Depot, which contains all the virtual machine images, which you can start from. And I will be showing you what flavor you can find over there and how fast it is to start a new virtual machine. So I'm going to head out 